How are you guys doing today? Uh, today is uh, the 6th of January. Um, it's a late night study for me, so this may be uploading into the 7th, but uh, I am here. I am here. As uh, you see the title, this Bible study is called The Ways of the Desert Places. So we're going to be really diving into just a great elaboration of this world, a great elaboration of, of God's nature and his and his kingdom even more so like we've been doing in every study um, we're going to be in the book of proverbs today um, specifically in proverbs 30 starting in verse 16 um, and so as we get started oops, it fell down. as we get started as always please go to the lord about everything you hear and everything you receive um, make sure it is it is filtered through him and only him okay um, i'm here just to bear fruit and so fruit I will bear. So I pray we all have listening ears and an open heart and that God can touch us all with this message. All right, so we're gonna start off in verse 16. So verse 16 says, the grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water and the fire that saith not, it is enough. Um, this one, I'm gonna I'm sit in this verse for a minute because God broke this down quite a bit. So in this verse, of course, the earth is a womb. If you look at the earth and how it's situated, the planet is literally like a placenta. It's like a birthing area. Um, the way the earth is made and set up in layers and how it has a covering and a firmament, and then it has space between the firmament, but then there's a space for where the baby, the child only grows in. Um, in the expansion and, and it, through the layers of, of the correlation, you see that the earth is just like a womb. Um, with that being said, the Lord is also showing me that the earth is not filled with a straight and narrow knowledge. It is a desert place, hence the title. The reason why I got that is when it says in 16, uh, the earth that is not filled with water. Now water, if you break it down in many layers, it is referred to also as knowledge. It is also information, wisdom. It is infilling. It is to be filled. It is to take up space in the expanse of it. Um, it is to increase and put into, it's to give you life, okay? Um, this is the same correlation. What God was also showing me is that the earth is not filled with the straight and narrow knowledge. It is a desert place. So straight and narrow, the best way for a water or a river to flow is in a straight narrow path. If you dig a if you dig a line and pour water into it, that straight line flows water better than a line that is curved. Correct. So it's the same type of mentality. It's the same type of situation. The straight and narrow path, Christ's path, Jesus, is the best path for water or information to flow. So what is that information? Of course, is God's information, right? I was also showing me that in this is that the best place for a river to flow is in a straight and narrow path, like I just said, or is God's information. So what God is establishing in the, in the beginning of this study for me and for us is that God puts his information in a certain lane, period. God puts his information in a straight and narrow, in a forward way. It's not contorted it's not going left and right it's not a it's not a serpent type path it is straight that's the best way for water to, to flow it gets to a and b the quickest way that god is so straightforward he wants to get to a and b on point straightforward the quickest way what god was also showing me is that when it says the fire it says that it's not enough um, the Lord showed me is that <clears throat> is that fire, of course, that says it's not enough. How can fire say it's not enough? Well, it's not being fueled. A fire that isn't fueled will say it's not enough because it dims out and burns out. Correct. So what God was showing me is that they try the world, the earth tries to increase fire without oil. The earth tries to create fire or increase fire without oil. That's impossible. You can't increase a fire without fuel. It has to have fuel to increase. It can burn consistently in the state, but does it increase in its burning? Only when it has fuel to keep it burning or increase it. 
So of course, with this oil correlation, if the earth is a desert place and the earth is a barren womb and the earth has no water or the knowledge of God in the straight and narrow path, then what God was showing me is that is a question where he said, show me, how do you increase fire in a desert? Think about it. A desert has no fuel for fire. All it can do is burn what is already there. It can't increase in it. So what God was showing me is that it has to be from a heavenly means. The oil comes from. So if the earth is a desert and you have a straight and narrow path or you have fire that needs to be kindled. And since the earth is a desert and there's no oil in it, quote unquote, the oil has to come from a different territory. We've been speaking about that in many of my studies as territory. So what territory is that? The Father. And what does this oil symbolize? The Holy Spirit. This also goes into the scripture where it talks about the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins who had fire in their lamps, but no oil. They weren't seeking and receiving from heavenly places the kingdom of God, the oil to fill their lamp. While the five wise understood that, yo, I cannot find any oil in this earth for me to, to keep this lamp burning. So I must seek <clears throat> God who is out of this world, beyond this world, yet within it, to give me oil to keep going, but oil to keep my fire to increase Sometimes God doesn't just want to keep your fire going. He wants to increase your fire. And the only way to increase your fire is to be filled more with the Holy Spirit. And once again, you can't get this in the earth because it's a desert, barren place. <clears throat> One thing that God showed me too is that the world is a grave in a barren place. You only find dead things in it. You only find dead there because everyone in this world dies. There are so many dead things. We eat dead things, dead plants, dead food, dead meat. Even there's, God even showed me, even the dead in Christ are in the earth. Those who are dead to the world, but are in Christ are in the earth. Then you have those who have died in Christ who are in the earth, sleeping, quote unquote, or according to the word of God, God calls them sleeping. They're not dead. Um, so we see the whole correlation here. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to skip to verse 19. Verse 19 says the way of an eagle in the air. Now, let me see. Let me read 18 just to give you a background. It says there be, there be three things which are too wonderful for me. Yea, for which I know not the way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock the way of a ship in the midst of the sea and the way of a man with a maid. So I'm going to go and break down what God showed me about all the ones he, he revealed to me. So in 19, it says, um, the first one was the Eagle. And the Lord showed me about the Eagle is that the, the way of an Eagle and the freedom it has when an Eagle is in the air, how much freedom does it have? It has complete freedom. It's in its element. It's in its space. It's in its nature. But in what direction can it go? Any. So how will you know the way of an eagle unless it takes it? You don't. It's something you have to op you have to observe. You can't predict the way of an eagle. You can't because it has too much space of freedom. You see, um, this is why it's wonderful. And also the, earth, the, the eagle isn't on the earth. The eagle isn't in the desert. Where's the eagle in the scripture? The eagle is in the air, away from the desert, away from the earth, in heavenly places. It's bigger. It's in a higher place. The eagle is. This is why God considers us, and I think in the book of Joel, um, that we will mount up with wings of eagles and take flight. We're getting flight out of this world. We're taking flight into the air. Um, away from the desert places. There's nothing for us there. There's nothing there for us here. Um, in the part where it talks about the serpent, it says the way of a serpent upon a rock. Now this takes a visual image. We all know that a serpent, when it crawls or slithers upon anything, 
a part of his body is on that object, but yet a part of the body is not. Um, if you watch a serpent slide over a rock, you'll see that a part of the belly keeps, it stays curved as it moves, but the whole body is still not exactly on the rock. It is beyond it and ahead of it. You kind of see what I'm saying? If you really imagine a, a serpent just sliding over a rock, you'll see what I'm saying. But what God was showing me about that is that the way of a serpent on a rock, it can be a rock yet off of it at the same time. A serpent can be on a rock yet off of it at the same time, completely. So going off to what the, the rock stands for in the Bible is that it refers to foundations. The rock is a foundation, but yet how does a snake or a serpent have a found, have slide over the rock, the foundation, yet slide off of it and still have both places considered in his body? It's because the way of a serpent and is good and evil. Let's take what the rock, let's take what rock means in the Bible. We, we know that Jesus said, he called Peter and on this rock I will build my church because Peter was called the rock of his church now we understand what God is establishing in the rock it's his foundation it's his is his his nature him so you're having a serpent that is on the foundation of God yet off of it now we're still talking about this desert place this desert earth so you have a, a snake that is on the rock of God, yet in the desert places. So you have a good and evil. The forked tongue again. You know how the serpent speaks with the forked tongue? It speaks good and evil. So just as the serpent is on a good foundation, Jesus, it is on the sandy foundations of the earth. This is why the serpent speaks the way it does. Just like when, G when Satan went to Jesus and started quoting scripture started quoting scripture. Even as he quoted scripture, he was speaking in a evil, earthly method of the scripture. He was speaking of the foundation of God, yet of the sandy desert that he was sliding on. He was doing both. So what God was also showing me is that the four tongue or the straddling of the fence that the serpent does is the correlation of what Solomon is saying is that things, the four things that um, that are wonderful, or four things he that he does not know, but three things that are wonderful. So it's that good and evil speech of the serpent, okay, or the leavened speech, leavened bread. You kind of see where I'm going with that. Um. Hopefully that got through. I tried to explain it the best way it was shown. <laughs> uh, and when it goes to the uh, the way of a man with a mate, the one thing the Lord showed me, and I, now this is, I'm sure, many different um, correlations and different depths of meaning, but the level that the Lord showed me is that the way um, the man, the way of man's decisions with a maid and his intent is mysterious. Because a maid is a is a female servant. Yet with a man, you don't you can see where it's a servant, but also can have different intentions. So it's it's a mysterious or a mysterious intent. Um, that's what the Lord showed me on that one. So we're seeing a painting of what this desert place is. This desert place is a place where you have eagles who don't want to who don't land in the in the earth who don't land or spend time in the desert you have serpents who are on the foundation of god and in the sand to give you a forked tongue of good and evil you have men who may have female servants or females who work around them or work with them but you can't see that but you don't know the full intention because the title of the female servant or the maid is 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 um gives too much area for uh, unknown intent. We see this all in the world. We see this abused completely in the in this planet where men are, are either correctly using what a female servant or maid is or, or not, 
or whatever they they choose to, right? Um, we're going to go to verse 22. Verse 22 says, For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he filled with me. Um, let me read 21 so we just understand. Uh, for three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. So once again, verse 22 says, For a servant when he is reigneth, a fool when he is filled with me. For an odious woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is that is heir to her mistress. So I'm gonna break the what God showed me in this as well. So for 22, uh, the Lord showed me that a fool filled with knowledge still speaks as a fool. Duh. <laughs> it's not much more to that and not much less. Um, a, a servant um, reign, a servant who reigns has no leadership or it wouldn't be a servant. Remember, a king reigns, not a servant reigns. Um, even Jesus, when he came as a servant, he says, I come as a servant to this to this world. He wasn't reigning anything. He said, I came to divide. When people were expecting him in his kingdom to take over and do um, the things he does in the end times, they were messing it up. He came as a servant. He wasn't coming to, to reign anything. And so just like this verse says, a servant um, when he reigneth is the same thing as how can a servant reign if he's not appointed a king? He's not reigning over anything. And plus, that means no proper leadership. That servant won't be prosperous in his leadership at all. You see how the world is just very, very backwards. This this dusty, this uh, desert place is very uh, backwards. It's a backward type world. Good is evil and evil is good. We see that, right? Um, these are things that are out of place and out of operation. I um, mean, verse 23, it says, an odious woman when she is married and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. Um, the word odious, if you look it up, means an extremely unpleasant woman or a repulsive woman. And so this is somebody, of course, <laughs> an extremely unpleasant woman that is married will have the earth disquieted completely. Um, repulsiveness is a forward speech that's very, very noisy. Um, it's a very type of loud mindset. Let's say that. <laughs> um, let me see. Uh, in verse 25, we're going to read, and I'm going to go back and re recap on some things. Verse 25 says, um, 24, my, my bad. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. But they are exceeding wise. 25 says, The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. What God was showing me about that is that this is, this is more like the ways of heaven. This is ways of the kingdom mentality, the heavenly mentality. Um, that mindset. And what God was showing me is that these that do right by the knowledge they are given, such as love thy neighbor as thyself. These are people who can, who take in the knowledge that they've received and do um, righteously by faith in Christ, by the word of God, they move with their knowledge. You see, that's, that's the proper way to move with knowledge is through Christ Jesus. The straight and narrow path or the river that flows easily through a straight narrow path. In verse uh, 26, it says, the coney is but a feeble folk yet make their house in the rocks. Of course, you understand that this is an unshakable place. Making yourself in the rocks is a place where you have established yourself in a foundation that can't be rocked. It can't be shaken. And also with this type of unshaken type foundation, it's, it's something that they prepared to withstand anything. They understood that they that they live in an evil world, that this world isn't isn't has things that may come against them, come against their house, come against their foundation. So they have tucked themselves away in the rocks to furthermore not just prevent what may happen today, but what may come in the future. 
And we see that easily what the kingdom of heaven speaks about that throughout the whole Bible. Um, and in 27, in 27, uh, it says, The locusts have no king, yet go they forward all of them by bands. So this is pretty straightforward as well. And the Lord showed me in this is that um, it is a, as if, as if a king had put them together is what God showed me. Is they operate as if a king had put them together, but there is none. Um, they operate um, as going to one goal, and they operate as going to a goal, but without needing to have leadership for that goal. They have a hive mind, and they move that way. Um, this is how the king of kings operates in us. This is what he calls us to. He calls us to operate not by kings on this plane, but by him. Um, it's not seen, but they operate in unison in one accord by the Holy Spirit, um, the body of Christ in, in one accord. Um, what else do I want to say? Uh, verse 28. Let's go to verse 28. The spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. So this was shown to me in a way where it was as if to have a spider come into a king's palace, a place you wouldn't think, a place it shouldn't be, is where the spider is like the kingdom of heaven where it says you take it by force and uh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violently. It's that um, they are operating or spiders operate in their nature. Um, despite where they're placed, um, they still do what they have always done. It's a never changing thing. And God causes us to be a never changing people, but only changed and renewed in him. Um, this is that same mentality as a spider. Um, and also spiders are extremely patient. They set up and prepare for their food. They set up and prepare for knowing that their food is coming soon. At some point, as long as they build that net, they're going to get their food. Um, that's another way it is too. Um, verse 30 says, which I'm going to skip 39, is that verse 30 says, um, let me read 29. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any. This is what God was showing me is that this is someone who knows their true identity. Someone who operates in their true identity and understands their identity in Christ won't, won't operate outside their nature. If, if God is establishing you, for example, as a king or a queen, right? And he is giving you that identity and you have, and you believe in it and you receive it and you accept it and, and you say amen to it then there you all you have to do through christ is operate in it and don't shake it don't be shaken about it just like it says a um a lion which is strongest among beasts and turneth not away for any he's not turning away for anybody he is strongest among beasts and he knows his position and he operates therefore in it in 31 it says a greyhound and he goat also, and a king against whom there is no uprising. Of course, with a he goat and a greyhound and a king, you can expect the outcome and the consequence. This is also the same type of mentality. You understand what you're coming into. You understand that if I'm rising against a he goat, I'm going to get kicked or I'm going to get bum rushed. I'm going to get head butted. It's, it's a if so, then this. Okay. This is how the straight and narrow is. It's a simple path that is a if so, then this type of thing. It's clear. It's clear. It's clarity. It's not a backward type speech. It's not a backward type way. It's not the ways of the desert that that seem the same wherever you look. You know, it's different. There is identifications for separation and different things and different places, everything is positioned. In a desert, you can't really see anything positioned. You just see the same thing in sand dunes and hills or valleys. It looks the same, okay? 
There's no differentiation. In verse 32, it says, If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Of course, lifting up thyself is that self-righteousness or someone saying, get off your high horse. You know, you have, you're, you're lifting yourself up higher than you should. And of course, putting your hand over your mouth, it, it is a confession in a way. It's vulnerability and, it humili and it's humbling. It humiliates you in a way that is good. Um, but you're doing it yourself. You're not having someone else correct you. You have corrected yourself and have, you fixed yourself. You've, you've done what you needed to do to say, oh man, I messed up. And you immediately covered your hand because you know, this is what messed you up, right? The tongue is such a good and bad thing based on how it's being used. You see? Um, and what I wanted to do is also just sum this whole entire study up in this is that these are the ways um, and these are what make the earth a barren place without water. Everything in this scripture and everything I was just shown and shared in this message to you is the ways that the earth is barren in a desert and today without water, without the word of God, without God's information in it. You understand that the, the word of God and the the information of God has to come from God's place, his heavenly places, right? And in the description and the elaboration revelation of this Bible study, we see that the earth is full of backwards, forwards, left and right, similar things that really aren't similar, ways you can't depict things that, that, that look all the same. In this, God was also showing me that this backwards world that we live in, water can't flow backwards, guys. Water can't flow backwards. So if water can't flow backwards, then water can't be in it. This is why God's revelation comes from heaven. It comes from a different place. It has to. The natures of water don't operate that way. Um, furthermore, what I wanted to share is that the divide of this world and the methods of it are going to be even exposed. I believe God is showing these desert, this type of desert scenario and this desert parallel to give all of us a clear, clear picture of how this world is and the state it is in the way that you really can't tell the difference in places anymore. It's been divided off to a point where the world and different areas of the world still look the same. That's how it is. But through this, the kingdom of God, the ways of the Lord are going to look even more differentiated. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So this is the study. This is what God had me give the message to. And I pray it blessed you guys. Um, I thank you guys for everything you do. I thank you for all the support. I thank you for all the information, the dreams and visions and emails and comments. Um, if this blessed you guys, please share it. Share it to someone who, who may benefit from the fruit bear here. Um, it's really cool to see everyone take in such deeper knowledge that um, I believe is deeper, may not be to some others, um, and and really be blessed by the Lord by it. You know, I, I love watching God work. It's not about me working. Um, so it's really cool to see all the uh, testimonies, you know, just seeing the testimonies. So I love y'all. Y'all be blessed, and I'll see you on the next video.